the three together. And it came to pass that while Apollos was at Corinth, Paul, and he passed through the upper coast, came to Ephesus, and finding certain disciples, he said unto them, Have you received the Holy Ghost since you believed? And they said unto him, We have not so much as heard whether there be any Holy Ghost. And he said unto them, Unto what then were you baptized? And they said, Unto John's baptism. Five verse 1, came to pass that while Apollos was at Corinth. Chapter 18, what was Apollos doing at Corinth? The last few verses. Oh, chapter 18. What was he doing there? Convincing the Jews. Convincing the Jews. Preaching. Uh, what was his baptism at first? Yeah. Under John's baptism? The same as we'll see a little later in these other verses. And so... Uh, he was, wasn't he being instructed by Aquila and Priscilla? Yes, Aquila and Priscilla instructed them the right way, and so he got so straightened out, and then became a, a dynamic preacher of the Word of God, and taught many, and he came to the Lord... Uh, under, he had mightily convinced the Jews in verse 28 of chapter 18 showing that the scripture of the Lord Jesus was the Messiah, the Christ so then it came to pass it says uh, Apollos was still at Corinth uh, where did Paul go then? did he stay at Corinth? no, no. Ephesus, where did he go? Ephesus. Ephesus. how long was he at Corinth? ministering, how long? a year and a half 18 months, a year and a half and by the way, how long do you think he's going to be at Corinth? I mean, at Ephesus. Well, you don't it's, it's coming down here. What is it? Six months. We'll see it later. No, two full years. Um, two yes. full years. Now, let's go. Let me get to that. So then in verse number two, uh, he, who's the he referred to? Who's that? Who's the he in verse two? Paul. Uh, Paul. Paul, Paul the Apostle. Son of them. Who's them? What people there? The people in Ephesus. People in Ephesus. And he asked a question. What was that important question that he asked them? Have received the Holy Ghost. All right, since you believe. Now, Acts is a transitional book, as we know. It's between the Acts chapter 2, the baptism of the Holy Spirit, and the completion of the whole New Testament, 90 or 100 AD. So there's transitional things. This is one transitional thing. Uh, what is the current, present, in this dispensation, time in which genuine, true, born-again Christians receive the Holy Spirit? When they believe. Oh, on their salvation, that's right, when they believe. As soon as they're saved, the Holy Spirit of God comes within, in them. And But uh, he didn't, they didn't know this. Uh, what, uh, they asked another question. Well, that's verse 2, verse 2, verse 2, two. Uh, did they even hear about the Holy Spirit? These people at Ephesus. Never heard, never heard there was anything such as the Holy Spirit. They didn't know anything about it. And then in verse 3, they asked another question. What was that question that Paul asked them? What were you baptized? What was the answer? John's baptism. Which John was this? John the Baptist. John the Baptist. So John the Baptist was the Apostle John. So just like Apollos is baptized in the River Jordan by John's baptism. And John was the forerunner of the Lord Jesus Christ, but it was not different. And so they didn't have proper baptism at that time. Let's read verse number 4, 5, and 6 together. Then says Paul, John verily baptized you with the baptism of repentance, saying unto the people that they should believe on him which should come after him, that is, on Christ Jesus. When they heard this, they were baptized in the name of the Lord Jesus. And when Paul had laid his hands upon them, the Holy Ghost came on them, and they spake with tongues and prophesied. All right, verse number four. Uh, what did they say about John's baptism? What was the type or purpose of that baptism in verse four? Repentance. 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 What does repentance mean? Turn Change around. of mind. Change of mind. Meta nous. Meta noia. Meta is a change. Noia is from nous to mind. Change of mind. And uh, change of mind. Other things may change, but the change of mind. So uh, baptism and repentance, they had to change their mind, do a lot of different things. Uh, saying to the people, uh, what did John's ministry tell the people in that verse 4? Very important message. What was his main message he told to them? Believe on him. Believe on whom? Christ. Jesus. Lord Jesus Christ. The one that should come after him. What was the relationship between the Lord Jesus Christ and John the Baptist? He was a forerunner. He was a cousin. All right? He was a forerunner. He was a cousin. What was John's mother's name? Elizabeth. Elizabeth. We've just been reading, our, reading through the Bible just the other day. So we've been reading about Elizabeth. And so uh, 
Uh, when did Elizabeth come to visit Mary, the mother of our Lord Jesus Christ? How? Did Mary visit Elizabeth? Her? Mary come to visit her. I guess that's true. Mary went to visit her. Okay. Five months. Wasn't it? I think it was about six months. I think. Six months. Months I think she was six months with John. That was a miracle, wasn't it? And then uh, with John? Uh, John, John the Baptist, yes. Okay. Before he was born. I believe it was six months. Take a look at that in the book of Luke. We've been reading it. I think, as I recall, I think it could be wrong. So, uh, they, John's baptism, baptism repentance, saying uh, they should believe on him whom they should, should come after him, on the Lord Jesus Christ. Six months. Six months. All right, the six months. Like with, Gabriel, with, um, sent from God to a city of Galilee named Nazareth. That uh -huh. was when that was when Mary found out. Mary found out. That's right. So uh, the purpose of John's ministry was to be a forerunner of the Lord Jesus Christ and have people trust genuine faith in Him. And then in verse number five, uh, when these people in Ephesus, some of those who are listening, heard this, what, what happened to them? What happened? I'm sure they believed, they trust the Lord Jesus Christ, and then after that, what happened? They were baptized. Baptized in the name of the Lord Jesus. And so uh, this was uh, obedience. Does baptism save people? No. No, it doesn't save people. Do some churches teach that? Yes, yes baptism, regeneration. Yeah, and the sprinkle of little babies, the Roman Catholic Church says what happens according to their theology? Original sin. Original sin is remitted. True or false? False. Absolutely false. Absolutely false. Absolutely. Uh, water cannot remove the sin. It must be personal, genuine faith in the Lord Jesus Christ. And then uh, they're baptized in the name of the Lord Jesus. And then in verse 7, number 6, what happened at that time? Paul laid hands on them. Laid hands on them. What happened after he laid hands on these believers? Saved, born again, Christ. The Holy Spirit came upon them. Holy Spirit came upon them. Yes, Steve. The purpose of baptism is what? It Obedience. To the Lord. Obedience. Obedience to the Lord Jesus Christ. As it says, that's so called great commission. A testimony. A uh, Believing and baptism are. are, are no, no. Yeah. no, no, no. I say the baptism is a is a testimony of uh, of obedience to the things of the Lord. Remember the Great Commission. Picture. We had all the world and preach the gospel to every creature. He that is baptized, uh, believe in, and is baptized shall be saved. So, believer's baptism is one of the parts of the Great Commission. And so that's obedience to the things okay. of that. So it doesn't save us, it's just an obedience one. Yeah, Vaughn? It's a picture of the death and burial of Christ. Yes, it's a picture of his death, burial, and the water, submersion, then risen of life and oh, resurrection. Okay. See, death, burial, and resurrection. Uh, that's what we believe. We believe baptism by immersion. Uh, baptism means to dip under and to immerse. So uh, then in verse number uh, six, when he laid his hands upon them, they received the Holy Spirit. Uh, when does those, that, this is a transitional book as we said earlier uh, when does the Holy Spirit again I ask the same question come into the person today if they're genuine and saved when they believe when they believe trust in the Lord Jesus that's an instantaneous and, but here after and so later said, what else happened though in verse number 6 they speak with other tongues now again transitional book uh when was the first mention in the New Testament of the speaking in tongues? Chapter 2 of Acts. Chapter 2 of Acts, that's right. The day of Pentecost. And what do we believe tongues are? Languages. Known languages. languages. <coughs> Known languages. Mm -hmm. What do the Pentecostal Charismatics think that they are? Known. Just yeah, gibberish. Prayer, prayer language. Prayer language and yeah. so on, see. But what was the purpose that God gave those special languages in the day of Pentecost. To preach the gospel. Preach the gospel. Who was there at the day of Pentecost? Everybody. From Every, all, all the Jews. Jews from Jews all, from all, Jews from all over the world. And did they know, did these apostles know all the languages of the world? No. No. And if you look at them, they say roughly there are about 12 different languages, many different countries, but about 12 different languages. So there's enough. And how did they hear the gospel in their own language? That's a good question. Because the Holy Spirit gave them utterance. Gave them utterance. The apostles said they, it says very clear. They had language. That they had a known language, but the miracle, so they were able to hear the gospel in their own language. Mm -hmm. See, they spoke and they spoke. Exactly. So that's a special gift. Now, uh, that was the first time. Here it is. Uh, they spoke with other tongues. Again, it acts as a transitional book. Now, uh, is this miracle of speaking in tongues any longer with us today? No. No. When did it cease? 
At the end of uh, the writing of the Bible. Writing of the Bible. Where is a scripture that shows very clearly that's the case? Thirteen. Revelation. Revelation? What is it? Revelation what? What is the scripture that says no more tongues for this age? First Corinthians thirteen ten. First Corinthians thirteen ten. First Corinthians thirteen ten. But let me ask you a verse from Revelation. I guess I guess I was. First Corinthians. I was thinking about extra revelation. The extra verse, revelation. The yeah. verse against extra revelation. That's a good verse. 22. Chapter 22. 18 and 19. 18 and 19. Now, uh, in the first Corinthians 13, yeah, Diana, go ahead, Anne. Yeah. Well, we were talking about, and the we, <coughs> said we have not so much as heard whether there be a Holy Ghost. Mm -hmm. But in Psalms 50, Psalm 51, 11, David said, cast me not away from thy presence, and take not thy Holy Spirit from me. Mm -hmm. So I, I I wonder if they remembered this passage or if they had forgotten it. Well, they're probably just a few people, probably Gentiles, and they didn't even know the scripture. Well, the then how did they know about the baptism of John? Well, John was there, and he was in the area, I suppose, <coughs> from, from John's their mouth, I suppose, while he was in the ministry, What's before he was got his head cut off. Yeah. Apollos, is that what he taught them? Pardon me? Is that yeah. what Apollos taught them, though? The baptism of John? Well, uh, uh, this is an episode. we don't know exactly where they had the baptism of John, but it could be John the Baptist somehow ministered to them. Maybe. It says in, in the, before the previous chapter, a certain Jew named Apollos, born of Alexandria, a <coughs> man in mighty of the scriptures, came to Ephesus. And so, if he was teaching that... Could be. Okay. Maybe could be. That could be. Huh? No. So, they, they knew about this. But in 1 Corinthians 13, it talks about these gifts. And uh, somebody read verse, is it 9 and 10? 1 oh. Corinthians 13. Now abide with these things. 13, 13, 9. Start with 9. Chapter, Chapter 13, verse 9. What does it say? For we know in part, and we prophesy in part, but when that which is perfect is come, then that which is in part shall be done away. So we know in part, knowledge, prophesy in part, and that which is in part shall be taken away. In other words, when that which is perfect is come, what is the, that which is perfect referred to? The Bible. It's ta teleon, it's a neuter. It's not ha teleos, which is masculine. A lot of people are teaching. It's when the Lord Jesus Christ returns, when the He who is perfect comes. We got the tongues until that's what the Pentecostals are teaching. But this is Tautelion. When Tautelion referring to the Tiberion, the Bible is complete, and that which is in part shall be taken away. Yeah, Tammy. Verse 13 sort of uh, makes it adds a little bit to that. Mm -hmm. And now about his faith, hope, and charity, these three. But the greatest of these is charity. Mm -hmm. If it was when the Lord Jesus Christ Himself comes, then we wouldn't need faith or hope. Mm -hmm, that's right. We would only need charity. So we know right. that it can't be that. That's right. So that's these, the argument that they use. That's right. These these yeah. these gifts, these special gifts, including tongues and prophecy and all these other things, are taken away when that which is perfect has come. Then it says, I, "When I was a child, I spake as a child. When I became a child, I put away childish things." That's what these tongues and languages are, childish. No longer we need that. We've got the Bible. When the Bible is complete, we don't need special revelation by tongues and so on. Now, are there churches that teach differently on that? Yes. Yeah. What are some of the names of the denominations that teach? What is it? The Vineyard. The Vineyard Movement. What else? The what movement? The Vineyard Movement. What else? Wine. Vineyard. No, not wine. What's the name? The name? Who else? Explain the vineyard movement. Yeah, well, the vineyard movement is a group of people who got together to speak in tongues and different things. It's a, a lot of people getting together. Charismatics is another word for it. Pentecostals is another. That's what really we're talking about. The vineyard so special. It's a special one of the denominations in the charismatic movement. Uh, yes, Bill? Some Methodists are also uh, doing the charismatic stuff right now. Yes. And uh, from what I hear, uh, some uh, fringe churches in the Baptist movement That's right. are doing it as well. And some of the Roman Catholic people, they got a charismatic element of that. Yeah, Tammy? They're now calling this continuous 
people who believe that the gifts never cease. Mm -hmm. They're calling themselves continuists. Continuists, is that it? Continuists, yes. 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 But you see, uh, it ceased. And put away childish things uh, when it became that. So uh, that that verse 13, 9 and 10 tells us they ceased. But until the Bible was completed, still God still used this, these languages to preach the gospel, to tell other people about it. And so uh, they, they spoke in tongues or languages. Same miracles happened in chapter 2 of the book of Acts. That's it's not a longer, it's, it's, it's ceased now, that's, but this is transitional. And we, we have a lot of things that are no longer with us that we see in the book of Acts. Receiving the Holy Spirit and would believe is different than what it was before the, the church began and before the, the New Testament was completed. And this transitional thing, it was a special, like Paul, and we'll find a little bit later in Acts too, uh, they didn't receive the Holy Spirit until somebody put their hands on them or something. But this is the first time, we'll see later, but later, there's another thing. So, uh, spoken tongues and, and prophesied. What does prophesied mean? What does prophesied mean? Forthtelling. Forthtelling. And preaching. Or foretelling. Foretelling. <laughs> foretelling. Yeah, yeah. Yes. Or telling for telling for so but it's a sign this, gift. Is, this is a sign gift. This is one of the gifts, special yeah, revelation in prophecy. Uh, the prophets reveal things from God's word that, that were true that nobody else knew. But uh, this was again temporary transitional book. No longer is prophecy as it says in First Corinthians thirteen nine, uh, whether it be gifts of knowledge, prophecy, tongues, they shall cease, they shall vanish away. See those are the various things. Yes, Ma? I wonder what they prophesied. Well, I don't know. Maybe they said they're going to go to school the next day and get lost. <laughs> I don't think about it. Yeah, Bill. Well, there are uh, several uh, people that appear on Trinity Broadcasting uh, oh, yeah. uh, from time to time who uh, claim to be prophets. Yes. Uh, <laughs> That's right. In fact, uh, uh, that man, Jonathan Kahn, in one of the articles has mentioned uh, he's an American prophet. Today's American prophet. We don't have prophets anymore. Yes, go ahead, Tammy. That's one of the oh. neo-charismatics. Neo-charismatics. Uh, yes, yes. A lot of people claim to be prophets. That's right. Yes, fine. Uh, one time we went to a big meeting. I think it might have been in Missouri. One of those big meetings that she went as a reporter. As a reporter, yes. And uh, they had <coughs> a, big, a big stadium, like a football stadium. Uh -huh. Arrowhead. And, uh, Arrowhead Stadium. Uh -huh. And... Uh, up on the platform, so they had some people that were prophets, and they prophesied. Yes. They stood there and prophesied. That's right, right in front of them. And I'm not sure, and some of them did it in tongues, and then they had people translating that, it. That's right. So that was a charismatic meeting. We had 10 as, as reporters, huge gathering. The Roman Catholics, the Protestants, the Baptists, all kinds of people, all mixed up. Right. And Bill? There are uh, a lot of uh, black churches in this area, as well as all over the country, who do uh, all the charismatic uh, things and all the anything that's popular mm -hmm. uh, within uh, the pop Christian culture, uh, many of those many of those local churches have prophets of their own uh, mm -hmm. in there. It's more widespread than a lot of people realize. Mm -hmm. Very good. Questions at bftbc.org or 856-261-9018. Give us a call or comment. Or give us an email. Got any comments on this? So this is what they did. They, they prophesied, received the Holy Spirit, and uh, uh, prophesied. Then let's read verses 7, 8, and 9 together. And all the men were about 12. And he went into the synagogue and spake boldly for the space of three months, disputing and persuading the things concerning the kingdom of God. But when divers were hardened and believed not, but spake evil of the way before the multitude, he departed from them and separated the disciples, disputed daily in the school of one Tyrannus. Tyrannus. All right, so how many people were there when he laid his hands upon him in verse 7? Twelve. There were twelve men. It's a dozen men. And then in verse 8, where did Paul go then? Synagogues. What, what, did, they do, what did they do in the synagogue? Preach the gospel. Preach the gospel. That's what Paul did, but normally what did they do? They just talked. They, they just talked. Talk who? They read the Old Testament. The Old Testament. Oh, who, the Old Testament. who was there? What type of people were the there? Jews. Jews. Jews are the Jews. And sometimes there were Gentiles that came in that God place. God right? but, what is it? The God's peers and other parts of the scripture talks yes. about three groups of people oh. that are in the synagogue. The Jews, the Gentiles, and the God's peers. 
Not sure about, no, maybe it's Jews, proselytes, the guide theorists. I'm not sure how. Mm -hmm. it's uh, now, but there's guide theorists. Synagogue uh, comes from what, what two Synagogue. Greek words? Synagogue. Sun is with. Ago, to gather or to lead or to go into with. To gather with. That's what a synagogue is. To gather with. Gather with. It's gathering some. That's to gather together uh, with someone. Uh, so uh, this is what they were, about 12 of them at that time. And uh, what did Paul do when he went into the synagogue? By the way, who does that he refer to in verse 8? He went. Paul. Paul, that's right. And what did he do when he went there? These boldly. See, he, he spake, but spoke. what does it mean to speak boldly? What's the opposite of speaking well, boldly? Without fear. Without fearfully. 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 Yeah. Fearfully. 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 Without fear. Without fear. Without fear. Without fear. Without fear. Without fear. You ask what the opposite was. Yes, the opposite. Was. Fearfully. Fearfully. So we were all in agreement. That's right. Fearfully. <laughs> the opposite. So speaking boldly. Now, does every... Uh, Paul was an apostle of the Lord. He was called... Does every, for instance, every preacher, for example, today, in different terms, do they speak boldly? No, a lot of times. Now, sometimes, some they, sometimes they speak boldly, and sometimes now just because someone speaks boldly, does that mean they're speaking correctly and scripturally? Oh, no. no, see, they get loud, loud. You know, uh, you're looking at some of these TV programs. I don't listen to them, but screaming, I'm sure screaming, yelling. shouting, yelling, and so on. But the boldness, but not proper scriptural. Yes, Tammy. Well, you don't really have to shout in order to be bold. No, that's true. You could, you could be. Quiet and, and still be bold. Yeah, that's true. Right. That's true. But some are quiet and also bold, but they're quietly wrong. See? <laughs> so uh, that's true. Uh, these are things. But he spoke very bold. In other words, he did Paul really believe what he was preaching? Sure. He yes. certainly did. Absolutely. Yeah, the Lord saved him out of a, a life of sin. We're going to kill Christians and imprison them. And he, he said, Lord, what wilt thou have me to do? What did Lord Jesus tell him to do? Believe, believe oh, what, what did the Lord Jesus tell Paul to do at his conversion? Speak bold. Go to Ananias. Go to Ananias and see what you do then. Also preach the word to, out to the Gentiles. That's main, his, his main course mentioned in chapter 26, I believe, of Acts 22 and 26 specifically. So he preached boldly uh, there in verse number 8. Now how long did he speak in that synagogue? Three months. Three months. That's a long time, isn't it? You think somebody going to go home early? Well, they went home to eat, I'm sure. But at least they came to the meeting, and back and forth, they came to the meeting, and so forth. Didn't well, say the full thing. On, on the, the yeah, Sabbath he stood day, there for three right? months. Yes, on the Sabbath day, he was there. Now, now, what do the two things that say that he spoke, or the method that he used? Disputing, disputing and persuading. persuading. What is the difference between disputing and disagreeing? Arguing. 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 Why, what the, why did he have to dispute? They a lot of they think that they believe wrong or choose. They didn't believe the Lord Jesus Christ, and so they dispute. And what does the next word mean? Persuade. Pers it means persuade, all right, to persuade. Persuading means what? To get people, people to convince agree somebody with. to agree. Uh, concerning what? What is the matter? What was the main topic? Oh. The kingdom of God. The kingdom of God. And when the Lord Jesus told Nicodemus in John chapter 3, uh, except you be born again, you shall not see what? The kingdom, kingdom of God. So he, he preached the word of God. What does the kingdom of God in that sense mean? Salvation. Salvation and Heaven. God's rule over the person. Not that there's a big physical thing, but uh, the Lord is, is their king because they've trusted him as their savior and redeemer. And that's like salvation, the kingdom of God. I'm talking about the scriptures. So that's what he did for for three whole months uh, That in that when he was there. Then in verse number Nine, what was the reaction of Paul's preaching? Boldly and disputing and persuading. People are hardened. What does divers mean? Various. 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 Different ones. Hardened. What does hardened mean? Like to Pharaoh's have a hard heart. heart. Hard heart? Like Pharaoh's heart. Like Pharaoh's heart was hardened. Were they receptive? No. no. Stubborn resistance. Stubborn resistance. Now, where does faith reside if it's true faith? In the heart. In the with heart. the heart, man believeth unto righteousness, with the mouth confession is made unto salvation. Right. It's a heart condition. If it's not in the heart, genuine faith, is a person saved? No. It has to be heart belief, genuine belief, genuine faith in the Lord Jesus Christ as Savior. And so it's very clear some were hardened. And what's the opposite? They were hardened, and what was the hardening? What did it produce in verse number nine? They didn't believe. They believe not. 
when you get hardened for the truth, you don't want to believe the truth. They believe that. What did they not believe, do you think? What did, do you think Paul preached to them? They believed it was evil. What was it? What did Paul preach to them? The gospel. God. The gospel. What did he say with the gospel? What did he tell them? What gospel did he talk about? The good news of Jesus. What about the Lord Jesus Christ? That he died on the cross for our sins. For our sins, the sins of the world. And he talked, told them about that and they were hardened and they believed not. Believed not the gospel. I'm not ashamed of the gospel of Christ that says John in Romans 1.16. For it is the power of God and the salvation of everyone that believeth, to the Jew first and also to the Greek. Yeah, Dave? The people at the, uh, at, at the uh, uh, car place, yes. we were all in there, uh -huh. and I was talking to this group of uh, people that were right, uh -huh. right with me, uh -huh. and I'm trying to give them the gospel, and, and uh, they were really interested, but uh -huh. then I... I took tracks and gave, tried to give it to some other people mm -hmm. and there were some men there and they just said, no, I'm not interested. Like, uh -huh. really? Like, yeah. wow. <laughs> Hardened hearts yeah. as these people here, believe it or not. But they, what did they do instead of not believing and being hardened in their hearts? They spoke evil. They spoke evil of what? The way. That way. What way do you think they're talking about? The, the way, of salvation. way of salvation. Christ. The way of salvation. Lord Jesus. John 14, 6, Jesus said to them, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man cometh unto the Father but by me. Evil. What do you mean speaking evil? What does that mean? Bad about it. Bad. Didn't want to believe. They, they trounced it. They criticized it. They condemned it. It was a horrible thing. See, they just cut it up and threw it out, spit it out. Uh, speak evil the way. Who did they speak evil the way to? Who, who was their audience? The Jews. All right, but what else in verse number nine? Just a few. Now there was the. Uh, Just a few people. Multitude. Multitude. What does multitude mean? Different, different. Whole groups. lot of people. Whole, whole lot of people. Hundreds of people. And so. I think there are hundreds there. Well, multitude. I don't know. Would, 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 would we have a multitude here tonight? No. no. Okay. See, Forty-four thousand. Well, it could be 4, in 000, the hundreds. 000, it, could be the it could be in the hundreds. It could be a thousand. Who knows? But. Uh, it doesn't say exactly where Paul was in Ephesus when he talked. He was in the synagogue, I guess, here. But in the school of Tyrannus. The school of Tyrannus, at the end of the verse, yes, right? And spoke uh, that, that way. The, they eat. See, but we don't know what how many were listening to Paul, but when these people left where Paul was, they went out of the highways and byways of multitudes of people they met. That's the multitude. It wasn't necessarily the ones that Paul was with. They spoke uh, evil before the multitude. And what, did, what was Paul's reaction when he saw the reaction of these people? He departed from them. Why do you think he departed from them? Because he knew they didn't believe. All right. Now, can you convince a person against their will? No. no. Can you hit them on the head? Does that make them believe? Oh, no. It could kill them, but it could make them believe. It could knock them out. It just makes them angry. It makes them angry. Anna? They say that a man convinced like against his well, is of the same opinion. <laughs> That's a good statement. Wait, we'll That's the old proverb. Read that uh, again. A man to... convinced against his will is of the same opinion still. Let's all say it together. A man, a man convinced, convinced against, against his, his will, will is, is of the, the same, same opinion, opinion still. still. Once more. A man <laughs> convinced I, I against his it. will is of the same opinion still. In other words, if you're convinced somebody against their will, they don't change their opinion. They're of the same opinion oh, okay. still. They just, they just go along with you. It's easier when you say it. <laughs> Anna, Anna, then Dave. That's like the people will say, uh, would you like to give me your money? Uh, and the person says no. And then the person pulls out a gun, would you like to give me your money? Well, the person still doesn't want to give them their money, mm -hmm. but they will anyway because... They're convinced against their will. Mm -hmm. But they didn't give them... Anyhow, yeah, Dave. Uh, when I give tracts to people, mm -hmm. like today, and, mm -hmm. and, and I always ask them, would you accept this? Would it, would it be okay if I give you this? Mm -hmm. And, and uh, that way, you know, it's not against their will. No. And, and nobody can say anything that's because right. you but, ask them, but what would do, you accept What do some say when you ask no them? No way. Uh, what do others say? What do others say that you give tracts to? 
oh, oh, uh, Are there they accepted, and, and they were all reading it. Good. You know, uh, praise the Lord. <laughs> praise the Lord. So Paul departed uh, because they were rejecting the Savior and separated the disciples. Uh, is it what should we do with those that are desperately hardened and believe not the gospel? What should we do? Pray with, for them. Pray for them. What else? Did, separate them. Paul did right, didn't he? He separated the disciples. He didn't want. What happens if you don't separate from those whose hearts are hardened and believe not? They argue. We just keep they arguing. They argue. Evil they fight. Communications corrupt. Waste of time. First Corinthians 15, 33. 33. Not 34, but 33. Mm -hmm. We learned that last Sunday. Let's say it together. Evil well, communications, communications corrupt. Actually, be not deceived. Be not deceived. That's right. Be not deceived. Be not deceived. Slower. Be not deceived. Evil communications corrupt. Good manners. In that sense, what does communications mean? What does communication mean? Message. Well, Being with normally people. relationships. Relationships. See, koinonia. It's koinonia. It's fellowship. Those that are relationships. Evil communication means evil associations with people. Evil. What kind of what kind of association would those be? Evil association. What does that mean? Non-believers. Non-believers and maybe crooks and thieves and rapists and thugs and all kinds of things. And what happens? What does it mean? Corrupt. Evil communication or association with evil people. Corrupt. Good they, manners. What does it mean? They corrupt. could affect you. They could affect you. Good manners. Good life. They could affect your life. Uh, if you stay away from them, you should stay away from them, separate from them. And first, second Corinthians six fourteen to seventeen one is very clear. Seven one is a very clear scripture. Be not unequally yoked together yeah, with Jesus, unbelievers. Jesus said to uh, wipe the um, uh, I forget. Wipe, wipe the plate clean. Uh, uh, it, if, if they don't accept, yeah. the, the disciples were going shake the dust, shake the dust off your feet. Yeah, yeah, that's right. The dust so, off their feet. That's right. As a, as a testimony against them. Testimony against them. So they departed, and that's good. Now, we can't depart completely from every unsaved person, but what about close association and affiliation? Tight fellowship. Do we have to maintain tight, close fellowship with evil people? No. No, no we don't. We don't know what our mailman believes, what our policeman believes, or fireman, or whatever, uh, what our grocery person is, whatever you buy things. But that's just a casual. So you can't, if you were completely separate from every evil person, you'd have to go out of this world because people are all around us. Mm -hmm. But close association separate from, because it corrupts good manners, good ethics and standards. Yeah. What does corrupt mean? Corrupt. Cause to decay. Cause to decay. Yeah, Dave? And that was a problem all the way through the Old Testament was that when, when they married, intermarried yes. with other uh, people mm -hmm. that didn't believe the mm -hmm. way they believed that this was a, a, a sin against that's right. God and that's what they were uh, judged for, yes. punished I think, for. I think one of the scriptures in the Old Testament, learn not the way of the heathen, learn not the way of the heathen. It's easy to pick up the heathen ways if we're hobnobbing with them all the time. Mm -hmm. uh, misery loves company. What does that mean? Misery. That's a good expression. Love. I always hear that. Come I went on. in Jeremiah to go to Egypt with him. I, I was told that to me one time. <laughs> is that right? <laughs> well, th there's other things, but uh, it's easy to. Is it easy to fall up or fall down? Fall down. Fall, fall down. down. See, anybody can fall scared. up. How do you fall up? You well, don't. You don't. <laughs> you have to jump. The stairs. It's easy. Yeah, on your ladder. On my ladder. Don't fall off my ladder. <laughs> okay. <laughs> I know. So anyhow, no, well, tell yeah, you that's know. very important. It's easy to fall down. In verse 10, uh, verse 9 rather, separated disciples. Now, what does this mean? Again, disputing daily. That's another word, disputing. Where'd that come from before? Where did we see that before? Verse 18. Verse 8, verse eight, verse eight, verse eight, eight. disputing and persuading. Here, he disputed where? In the school. In the school of Tyrannus. Now there, he taught in the school. He disputed with them if they had arguments and questions. Now, is it wrong to have a question about something? No. no. Uh, and so if somebody questions. Now, are there different kinds of questions? Are there honest questions and dishonest questions? Yeah. Yeah. So how can a question uh, be dishonest? Well, how can a question be dishonest? All right. 
That's a deceptive question. I just say, in what way? A misleading question. Misleading question. Okay. All right. Yes, Anna. The question intended to trip someone up. All right. A trip question. That's right. Trip question. So there, but they questioned and disputed. It's all right to ask a question. Now, are there, put it this way, are there sincere questions and insincere questions? Yes. Yeah, yes. Sure. What do you mean by a sincere question and an insincere question? One that you really want to know the answer to. Really want to know the answer. With well, an insincere question, what does that mean? There's some, uh, sometimes they ask a question mockingly. So sort of mockingly and or it's for an ulterior motive. Ulterior motive, just to make, make maybe to make the person answering the question look stupid or something. See, he's, knowing that he doesn't know how to answer. See, for instance, somebody would ask you the question, uh, "How many stars are there in the heavens?" What would you have to say? Millions. Millions. Trillions. I don't know. Trillions. We Trillions. just don't know. See? So some questions can stump us. Kind of. Yeah. Go ahead, Dave. This really brings out the the uh, personality of Paul. Oh, yes. That God had chosen him specially yes. because he was a person that could could do this. He yes. could dispute with people. Yeah. He had the background. He had the right. education. Yeah. Everything. Right. But but he had that personality. Yes. Uh, that Jewish type right. personality that could go forward right. and preach the gospel. Absolutely. He was well. And, and I wish prepared. I was like that. <laughs> well prepared. Wasn't You're fine. So in You're verse fine. number number nine. Not Jewish. Uh, now. And then verse 10, we'll, we'll stop verse, did we read 10? We didn't read 10, did we? No, not yet. Okay, maybe we first stop there. We'll stop at verse 9, but we'll take up that next surgery. But do you have any other comments or questions though before we close? We'll mark right there. We'll start with 10 next week, Lord willing. Any questions, Yvonne? It's not a question, but I question think... Questions or comments? Go ahead. It doesn't do us. Okay. I, I, I've been convicted. We have been praying for the missionaries on Thursday. We should pray for, uh -huh. for the Mormons, for Pam and David, and for... The other ones. Okay, remind us if you would next Thursday. We'll I, pray pray, for I thought we could pray in closing and for the Amy and her husband. Mm -hmm. But we we'll close in prayer. Okay. Well, but today, ladies, a closing word of prayer. Pray for our missionary, but he doesn't even know who they are. Oh, Just in general. Pray for in general. Pray in general. <laughs> in general. Go right ahead. Go right ahead. Dear Heavenly Father, we thank thee so much for this Bible study. Thank thee so much that we have the whole word of God yes. and that we can really study it and, and to know you better and, and to be able to um, be evangelists, uh, proclaimers of the truth of God. And I pray that you would help us to be firm in our faith and to be able to talk to people about Jesus without fear. Yes. And I pray that you would take fear from my heart, Lord, and that I won't be afraid sometimes to be able to speak the gospel. And I pray that you would help us all to do that, that we would be fervent in spirit serving the Lord. And I pray that you would guide us and direct us. And we thank thee so much for this Bible study, uh, that it, it refer, uh, makes us firm in our faith and, and help us to go forward for you. And I pray that you would bless our missionaries that are proclaiming your truth, and I pray that you would give them the boldness to go forward for you and to proclaim the gospel and, and to build up the churches and to teach people what the Bible really says. And I pray that you would bless us tonight, and thank you so much for this time together. In Jesus' name, amen. amen.